Okay, so by now we should be pretty comfortable working with variables. We know that first we say what the variable is going to hold, so double. Then we give it a name, my variable, my var. And if we so choose, we give it a value right off the bat. Right? Close that off. There we go. Done. But I think it's a good time right now to talk about what kinds of values the variables can hold. So here we go. I, I've just preassembled this. Uh, don't worry about copying it down unless you want to fool around with well, what kind of vari what kind of values each of these can support. Uh, so these are what are called primitive data types. We have byte, short, int, long, float, double, car, or chair, however you choose to say that. Um, so let's talk about byte. Byte holds a number, whole number between minus 128, 127. Short also holds a whole number uh, between negative 32,000 and positive 32,000, roughly. Um, here are the exact values. Int. Int holds a uh, whole number between negative 2 billion and positive 2 billion. And long holds a whole number between these two values. I think that's like 18, decim 18 zeros. I don't know what that number is. Um, okay, so then we have float. Float holds a decimal. Um, it's meant for precision calculations. Um, notice, if, if I just put a decimal place here, um, Java complains. Why does it complain? Well, it's because when you enter a decimal place, it assumes automatically that you, you want to work with a double. Uh, but if you want to work specific, see, it even tells you, type mismatch cannot convert double to float. Well, you can. Just put an F right there, and boom, it's a float. Um, double, same thing. Also lots of decimal places. That's about as much as I'm going to cover for those. And mm, char we'll get to in a second. Uh, so why why would you use why would you use a byte when you can always use a double? Well, um, as you go down this list, um, you start to see that each of these takes up twice as much memory as uh, the previous one. So let me explain. Uh, byte takes up 8 bits of memory. Um, short takes up 16 bits. Int takes up 32 bits. And long takes up 64 bits. Whereas float takes 32, double takes 64. Okay? Uh, so why does that matter? Well, if, you ha if you're running on a system which has a limited amount of resources and you're making thousands of calculations, then if you choose to use an, a long where you could have used an int then you're wasting memory and you might run out so what do, what do I mean a situation where an int may be suitable well say you, your number never goes above 2 billion you, you know your value will not exceed 2 billion such as you're managing the count of students in a school. You know that your count will not exceed 2 million. So there's no point in making that value a long. Okay? Um, I'm not going to get into float and double as far as the differences between them. Uh, there's documentation for that. But to be honest, I just always use double. Probably not exactly good practice, but... I've used double, it's been good so far to me. Um, mostly I've actually, to be honest with you, in, in my experience, I've used, when I'm, when I'm making variables, I'm, I do int and I do double. The other ones don't concern me so much. Um, char, char, 16 bits, holds one character letter. U0063, I believe, holds an S. Uh, or you can ho do something like this. And that will also assign that character to char. Just like that. That will also work. Those two are different values. Now, the other thing aside from primitive uh, 
data types that variables can hold is variables can uh, hold objects. Believe it or not, the strings that we've been working with um, are actually objects. My string hello. There we go. Strings are objects. See, they don't they don't get that nice purpley color. And here's one difference between a primitive data type and a object. Oftentimes, objects will start with a capital, whereas primitive data types will start with a lowercase. And they don't get highlighted in that nice blue color when you when you um, use them for a variable. Okay, system dot out dot print line. Let me just show you that all of that some of these actually work because you haven't seen a char before. Uh, my char. There we go. Play. Okay. S. Just like that. Um, you've seen string. You've seen double. You've seen int. Just making sure that you know that char works. Uh, the other ones do also work. Uh, feel free to play around with them. But these are the main ones I would use. Oh, there's one more. One more. That's a boolean. Um, I almost forgot about it. Boolean. My bool. Equals. Can hold two values. True. Mm, true. There we go. It's messing up my calc. My capitalization. Or false. So what happens if we print my bool? Bool. There we go. Uh, play. Okay. True. Or false. I use those often too. There we go. My bool. That's a good thing. If you just need to say true or false, yes or no, my bool's your man. Uh, so that's about it about variables and what they can hold. They can hold primitive data types, purple things, or an object, and we'll talk about objects lots more later.